That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Kaya and today we are going to be checking out the Finnish black metal, folk metal, pagan metal band <laughs> Moon Sorrow. I am very excited about this one. Now, they did win a poll a few weeks ago, so we are finally diving in. I know the time has come for some folk black metal. Um, and y'all warned me that Moon Sorrow had some really long songs. And you weren't lying. Most of their discography is at least six minutes long, but that's okay. Because today I feel like this is going to be a challenge. We, I have decided to listen to the title track from their 2008 EP, Tula Mirsky, Mirsky, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Their title track, which is that, Tula Mirsky, it's 29 minutes and 45 seconds long. Yep, I'm putting you through the ringer today, y'all. You've probably already heard the song. I haven't. I've never listened to a metal song this long before. I'm very curious. And also, the fact that it's like folk metal has me thinking this is going to be like Agaloc meets Opeth, like in my feels. That's what it's going to be. Mixed with like, I'm hoping like the best of Immortal. That's what I'm going for. And it's just going to be with like a little bit of Epica since it's so long. Epica's got some really long songs too. 30 minutes though is, that is a lot. Okay. So I don't know what to expect, but uh, before we get into the video, I am hosting a fundraiser for this year's thrash giving most of you know this by now but if you don't the local charity i am hosting is called brother wolf animal rescue it is local here to Asheville. brother wolf animal rescue is a no-kill animal shelter that works to save the lives of as many animals as possible in the western north carolina region each year brother wolf saves around 9,000 animals thanks to kind community-based donations as they receive no government funding to Brother Wolf, being a no-kill animal shelter means to do the absolute best to ensure a life outcome. They consider the animal's quality of life, community safety, and whether it's realistic to manage aggressive or difficult behaviors or health conditions in a home without risk to people or other animals. North Carolina is one of the worst states in the United States for the euthanization of sheltered animals, according to a national study. You can donate now to help Brother Wolf Animal Shelter in their mission to save as many animals animals as possible and help someone in the North Carolina region find their new best furry friend. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel. I post weekly videos documenting my metal journey as a brand new metal head. If that sounds interesting to you, then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. I also have my Discord, The Mosh Pit, in the description below. There's an invite link you can click to join. And I have my PO box down below. Also, if you want to send something to be featured in our monthly metal unboxing videos. All right, I've done enough talking. Let's get into Moon Sorrow and their 30 minute track, Tula Mirsky from their 2008 EP, Tula Mirsky. Starting exactly how I thought it would. Yep, oh man.
tyyni. Ja taivaan tähtiä peitti ohut, harsomainen sumu. I'm already sold, okay? For first impressions, I'm already there. Okay, I'm done. I'm sold. I'm here for Moon Sorrow. <laughs> Nothing's happened. <laughs> I'm already here for it because this... I love medieval stuff. This is making me think of, like, Game of Thrones, The Northmen, even though I hated that movie. Hated that movie. But the vibe of The Northmen was... Oh, everything I wanted. Yep, I'm here for it. Also, I know all of their uh, songs, I believe, are in... What are they speaking? The stupid question, I know. What do they speak in Finland? Is it Finnish? Don't laugh at me. I failed geography hardcore, okay? Side note, that's not even geography. Swedish? No. I'm looking it up. Finnish! Yeah, Swedish and Finnish. Yeah, okay. That was right. I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's saying.
Okay, first impressions now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that riff. Da -na 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 -na. Fire. Dope, nasty. Love the chants. Very different vibe than what I was expecting in terms of like vocals and instrumentation. Um, I was expecting something a little more like, um, I guess melodic like Opeth and like, uh, you know, Epica, like those bands I mentioned, but it's a lot more rough around the edges. It's given me like death kind of like vibes in terms of his vocals. And it's very harsh in comparison to kind of like, in a good way, it's just a different vibe. Both the instrumentation with the guitars and his vocals are so much more rough and harsh in comparison to the intro and what the story was and like because it was very medieval and everything um i'm interested to see where they go with it and see if they like bring it down and what other elements they add to it because right now it's making me think like we're on a ship and with the chance you know we got the ocean around us we're shirtless barbarian vikings and then we're chanting like going off to war that's what i have in my head so i like it so far i think the production in terms of like mixing is not my favorite i think the guitars are so forward here and his vocals are a little bit more outward here not I, they could be higher in the mix in my personal opinion same with the uh drums too or even further back behind his vocals but that's okay because so far instrumentation wise i like what we're here well what i'm hearing
part is so beautiful. It's so inspiring too. I think it's a key part. I'm getting a lot of different things. I think there's a little bit of like soft cello strings that are layered throughout this part. Now we have the keyboard solo. I'm getting so many different things. Like a little bit of Children of Bodom. Uh, what else is I getting? Oh, there was another band. Oh, um, Abstract Illusion. I'm getting an Abstract Illusion in here. There's so many different things. I still think that his vocals are so unique for this song as a whole. Let's continue. <laughs> I just am like freaking out. I've done that before where I go and film a whole video, never turned on my mic. PTSD. Uh, thoughts? This is like the most abstract illusion sounding section of this so far. Um, it sounds like they've got choir coming through here again. There's so many different things that are happening. The song portrays the story so well. Incredible piece of music. I'm just taking a quick scroll through this. This has been my favorite piece for a few years and it'll probably stay this way for a while. Mad respect for those guys. I once drove to work in a snowstorm with this as my soundtrack. I felt like I was gliding over the land on some sort of epic journey. It was still playing on my way home. Beautiful and powerful. This album is one of my favorites. Yep, I love that it's just this like continuation, this continuing story. <laughs> sai koko kesän rannikkoa piinanneen vimmaisen tuulle viimein laantumaan. Eihän kukaan meistä arvannut, mikä tuho meitä sentään kohtaisi. Muistan vain jonkun kironneen sitä, kuinka karja pitää sumun takia koota takaisin aikaan. Maybe this is like chapter two. Boing, a boing, boing machine. The little, I don't know what that is. If you know what that boing, boing thing is behind this, please let me know.
section. What a totally different vibe between this like little medieval rock section that we had prior to this. This is just such a way to like open up the pocket, bring a little bit of a different groove to it. And I love that there's almost like this little like half beat pause when the actual like real drums, I guess, come in. Dun, dun, dun. Sort of, it's not that long, but it just makes the drums hit a little better or like fast, better, faster, stronger. I don't know. Um, also, my I think that the combo of medieval sounding instruments with rock metal instruments that they had in that section just before this was fire. I love that they had the flute, they had the mandolin, and I love the like traditional drums and the whole sound of it. Just really was such a great way to mesh that with like a little bit of like sort of this choir, I don't know if it was like a real choir during that one section, but it was just such a great combination of like guitars, like actual electric guitars mixed with these medieval instruments following that like medieval, is it a pan flute? Um, it's just great. I love this section. <laughs> before that's previous in previously in the song starts with guitar and then I think they add the keys now they've added the medieval uh, is I think a mandolin I think they've added the mandolin on top of it is it a mandolin or is there another sort of like folk guitar instrument that's in here let me know <laughs>
Tropica sounding section. Sorry, I know I just played like so much, so I'll give us a break. <laughs> uh, this is the most Epica sounding section with all the choirs, and I love that they like how they opened it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. just like with that sort of choir section, really nice way to just open up this beautiful vocal pocket. Also, the like baritone uh, male choir ooze that were in this section prior to this. Money so well placed in this mix and just beautiful. Perfect layer. They're definitely I they're definitely experimenting with these little things. There's not as much of like the choral aspect and stuff like that. It's definitely still a lot of like straight instrumentation from them as well as their vocals, but I love so far that this song is in three chapters and they keep bringing it back to this like almost like medieval village and they just keep it going and I feel like right now we're in like pillage we're like taking over some village or in battle or something like that <laughs>
Is it just silence then afterwards? It is. Oh my lord, girl. That's the whole song. Holy cow, I feel like we just watched a movie. But I feel like we just watched like a two and a half hour film. Am I the only one? That had so much going on. I loved the three different chapters and like I loved that they brought it back down, had the narrator come back and then at the very end they bring the whole choir. So it's almost like one of those scenes in, you know, like the princess movies or whatever, like the sing song, sing song, like the, uh, you know, where they, they sing and it's a princess movie and then the whole town sings at the end you know because it's like the happy ending or whatever it's kind of the same vibe but more metal and more viking <laughs> so it's like everybody that's like on this boat or this journey or this town or whatever we're all like singing praise to this tumultuous thing being over <laughs> essentially oh my lord that was beautiful there were so many different sounds. I was getting definitely an abstract illusion, illusion, epica, um, agaloc, like those main three. I didn't get too much opeth. They weren't as technical as opeth. They were just more like storytelling than anything, but I'm curious to know what this story is if there's even anything on this because they don't it doesn't seem like they're very like no why is this tagged as pop on genius yeah we're not gonna get anywhere with this are we it's all in finish okay here let's try moon sorrow and we will go to uh Let's see what Metal Archives, our friend, our daddy, is um, saying about him. What does this band look like? Also. Oh, this is Moon Sara? Whoa! I didn't realize that that's what they looked like. Look at these dudes. Oh, they so look like... Yeah, they so look like... Vikings. Alright, it's getting close to my bedtime. I started filming this post dinner. I'm like, okay, can't blame me. Folk Pag and Black Metal. They're with Century Media Records. The one that we listened to was this EP, which is from Spike Farm. Spike Farm is still active. Helsinki. An hour and eight minutes long, and that's an EP. Okay, <laughs> but it's still six songs, so <laughs> they're still together from 95. Name of the band was inspired by Celtic Frost's song, Sorrows of the Moon. That's cool. Was temporarily put on hold in October 2021 due to urgent health issues of some band members. Started as a black metal band by the two Cervelli cousins. They started adding folk elements to their music, eventually evolving into a pagan folk metal band on their debut album, Sudanuni. They have progressively blackened, well, something. They have progressively blackened, and then it just says dot, 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 nothing else. So, anything on this one? Line up. What's this song about? The original version was on the Tama Talvi demo and the original version of Gelmir of Velgamer was on the oh man, Matsa Ma Metsa? I don't know. I'm sorry, a demo. Uh Tolmis Tolemis Mirski translates to 
Firestorm comes with a five-fold insert. Oh, I'm so into that. Recording information. The Metallica cover for Whom the Bell Tolls was recorded in 2005. That's a Metallica song? For Whom the Bell Tolls is a Metallica cover? You're... What? A Merciless cover? You're telling me you have this 30-minute banger of a medieval banger, banger track. Storytelling, beautiful, and then you follow it up with a Metallica cover? I guess it is an EP and you can do what you want, but that just doesn't seem to... It just doesn't flow, in my personal opinion. I don't know, maybe you don't... Maybe you think differently, but... When I think of Metallica, I think of Metallica, Thrash, Slayer, Testament, 80s, mm, goodness. I don't think medieval Viking, 30 minute journey on a ship, killing people with my spears shirtless. Ugh. Think Alexander Skarsgård and the Northmen, okay? I don't think Metallica when I look at them. Just a weird combo. I'm just saying it's a weird combo. You can't admit, you have to admit that that is a weird combo. I still don't know what the song is about. And I don't know if we're going to be able to find out. <laughs> but I'm going to look one more time. I just want to know what the story is. Okay, Wikipedia. Come on. Firestorm, first EP of Moon Sorrow. Da, 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 da. Over an hour in length, the release contains one new song and two covers and two re-recorded tracks from the band's early demos. Um, title track excuse me, is divided into nine chapters in the lyric sheet, which do not always correspond with a sequence or a progression between musical themes. The music deviates from chapter to chapter, from brutal black metal to acoustic folk rhythms. The remake of Taistalu Pojao Lasta, I'm sorry, just for the video, I'm going to try my best, does not incorporate the opening section of the original piece. Da, 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 da. So Firestorm is what we listened to. But nothing on Firestorm. Um, I mean, I loved the spoken monologue. I loved that. I, mean, I loved it. I loved all of the different elements. Okay, here's a review. Not something to expect from a band barely capable of fitting its full length on a single CD rip. And since EPs generally clock in under 30 minutes, the five track album seemed like perhaps an afterthought or a cash grab. This person's just like kind of being a little snarky, aren't ya? But once the details were revealed and it turned out that Moon Sorrow had had trouble fitting an EP on a CD, it was superficial. It was instantly obvious that calling the album an EP was more due to its importance among the band's discography than to such superficial issues as number or tracks or total length. It's an oddity in the Moon Sorrow discography. Not only does it take a step or two back in time along the band's career, Rather nice EP, but falls short of the band's other works. I don't like this dude. Da, 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 da. There's nothing. Nothing on this song. I want to know your thoughts. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. I appreciate you being here, though. Um, I thought this song was beautiful. A lot of people on here... Oh, translated spoken words. Ah. Oh. Of course, the YouTube comments are the, should always be the first place I look. Uh, here's one paragraph of one of the beginning spoken word at the very beginning of the song. 
I remember how I watched the night out of the window, the sea was calm, and the stars of the sky were covered by a thin, foggy fog. The beach was quieter than ever, but I did not sleep. I watched the birds tingle with their branches. I wondered why they were so restless, as if they were expecting something. Later, I realized that death had whispered to them, just as it would have been whispered to us if we had learned the language. Ooh, ominous. Whether or not that's an actual real translation, I'm going to just say it is. Because um, that sounds about right. A thin, foggy fog. Priceless. Yeah, I really like this song. I really like this. Um, I love the transitions. I think it's a beautiful track. It's definitely a different style of sort of folk black metal in comparison to listening to Immortal. And then it's got so many different elements of like, like I said, Epica, uh, an abstract illusion, definitely a lot of those. There was even a, a couple sections in this song that were very reflective of in Abstract Illusion's latest record that we listened to, so I could definitely hear it. I don't think that it makes sense to have this and then following it up with a Metallica cover, but maybe they did it in their own little folk metal way. I don't know. You let me know what you think about it. That's going to be it for my reaction, so I hope that y'all enjoyed. Uh, let me know more stuff about Moon Sorrow. What is your favorite record? What's your least favorite record? Do you have a favorite song? Um, what do you think about folk metal? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I think, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I think it's time for me to go to bed. I also really liked, I just like, I loved the transitions. I loved the medieval stuff about it. It makes me just want to listen to medieval music on YouTube now. <laughs> Um, but I want to know more information about Moonstar. I want to know what y'all think. Um, are there any other bands like Moonstar that you like to listen to that you would want on the channel? You can also let me know that too. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I got. So thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you so much for being here. Um, as always, I really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, you can. If you want to join my Discord, again, there's an invite link in the description as well as my P.O. Box if you want to send something to be featured in my metal unboxing videos. Um, if you want to donate money to our charity for this Thrash Giving, I encourage you to do so, but you don't have to. I know it's the holiday season and everybody's getting ready for cultmas. Okay, we are going to do something special for cultmas. Don't worry. We have lots of things to celebrate. So... I will see you soon, wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this. Please take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, you guys.